Hey, y'all. I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. <laughs> Because it's that kind of day. <laughs> it's the show that helps encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo, especially on the full moon as we're going through right now. <laughs> and with me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sherpa. Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Sherpa. <laughs> I give up. I give up. I totally give up. Oh, and the bad part is I have it written me. down. Oh, my God. <laughs> Kelly, it's one of those days. <laughs> oh, trust me, baby. I know. I know. I do. I'm having it, too. So, yeah. It's, you know, we're just going to call this the, the powered by menopause process. <laughs> Oh my God! The, the, the power of it's the, the show, full. Right? Cause we're, we're like <laughs> both of us. We're just you know, yeah, lots and lots of energy. <laughs> I don't know what's going just on. Just right a wee now, bit, but there is and every serious up leveling shit going down. I, I need to talk about that actually because you know we're we're talking about shadow work in the in the spiritual entrepreneur today, and we're going to talk about a lot of things today. So don't get too attached to the title because we're going to talk like all over the freaking place because I got shit to say. All right, so first thing I'm going to say is that um sorry I can hear myself coming back through. Um, I'm hearing myself come back in. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but you turned me up. Are you sure you turned me up in your headset and not in your mic? Because I, I hear an echo of myself. What about now? Uh, let me see. Now it's gone. Okay. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do. De -do -de -do. Okay. So, yeah. Um, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, you no. Know, where to go? I don't know. About the energy. Energy. No, that wasn't it. Uh, oh, up leveling. That's what it was. Um, so there's some serious up leveling happening right now. I mean, serious ass shit, right? It's, it's the, the number of spiritual practitioners that I see going through a massive up leveling is off the charts. I have, I, I can't remember the last time I saw this many people going through breakdown and breakdown and breakdown and breakthrough and, and redefinition of self. And I don't know who I am. And I don't trust myself anymore and all of this stuff that is identity level stuff, right? I mean, it is really insane how many people there are that are dealing with this right now. And I mean, these are not minor level shifts, right? So there's, there's times when we all go through certain pieces and parts, right? Um, and I'm, I'm sitting in front of an open window. So, <laughs> Uh, my hair is going wild. Anyway, the, uh, when you're dealing with an identity level shift, what happens is that you're, you're literally letting go of who you believe yourself to be in favor of who you're choosing to become. And so, uh, in the tree of life, uh, in, in Kabbalah, um, or Kabbalah, depending on who you ask, uh, there is a space in between the two top areas, right before you get to Katera at the top, there is, um, there's a triangular path and you can either go up the left side of the path or you can all go up the right side of the path, or you can go straight across the middle through the abyss of nothingness where you are, you, you're brought into complete nothingness and then you have to call yourself back into being at the top, right? An identity shift is that, right? It's letting go of everything you believe yourself to be. If you do it at a core level, you don't have to do it at a core level every time. But if you do it at a core level, um, it's literally like, I don't know who I am, right? And then suddenly you have to call yourself back into being. And so... Um, but it's, it's big that all of this is to say it's big, right? So if you are out there and you're going through one of these, I'm going to remind you that in 2020 episode number 97, we did an, uh, a grail initiation and, and at the time it was for 
you know, all of the stuff that we were going through as part of the pandemic and it's just the, the hermitage and we're being called into a new state of being and so on. But it's perfectly valid for right now. I just listened to it again today. I promise you it is perfectly valid for now. So the, and if you don't know what an initiation is, it, listen to the episode number 96 before it. It explains what an initiation is. Uh, but if you're walking through this right now, going back to that episode and re- doing the grail ritual would be a really good idea. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is there is, I, I don't, I don't know about you. You tell me there's been a huge amount of drama here. <laughs> I don't know if it's going around or if it's just me, but <laughs> I haven't seen this much drama in like 15, 20 years. And so there's like a huge amount of drama happening. And are you seeing that in your life? I'm seeing it around me. And mm -hmm. I consciously am in, in always uh, my boundaries, my boundaries, my boundaries. And you're trying to cross my boundaries. <laughs> Fuck you. Get out. And, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's so, but yeah, so, but I'm seeing it around. I'm seeing um, a lot of. Why is this person, you know, way from my past? They're just annoying now, and I don't want them in my life. But they still keep trying to butt into my life. But I don't want the drama. And I'm trying to tell them this, and they're not hearing me. So that's what I'm, I've been seeing in different relationships going on. Yeah. And, and that's going to continue to happen because there is the identity shift stuff happening. And when... People don't want to deal with an identity shift. They will focus outwards and project onto others. And so the drama gets real, right? So um, mm -hmm. just be aware that this shit's going down, right? Okay. So that's, that's number two. And um, number three is, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I don't think we actually properly introduced this, this theme for the year. Um, but we are doing a theme of the spiritual entrepreneur for the year. Uh, every year we do a, a series, right? And uh, this year it's on the spiritual entrepreneur. And so we're we're about to put out a uh, an email to everybody who's ever asked to be on the show that didn't get on in any other way. And uh, if you want to be on the show... <laughs> and, and this applies to you, then you can email at uh, you email Heather at kellysparta.com and, and she will talk to you about being on the show. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring on spiritual entrepreneurs who are uh, in need of coaching and we are going to coach them on air. And so if you are uh, just getting started or if you're up and running or if you're further along and you're, you're hitting the wall, you know, wherever you are in your entrepreneurial journey, journey, uh, if you want business and or personal coaching because you are having a challenge with something, then this is your opportunity to do that. Uh, but you must be a spiritual entrepreneur, and that means uh, you're either working in a spiritual field or you are running your non-spiritual business in a spiritual fashion, okay? Um, you know, utilizing energetics and things like that. So that's the requirement to be on the show. So, um, so yes, apply for that if that's something you want to do. And if you don't want to be on the show, but you really want the advice, <laughs> if you're like, I don't want to do it in public, right? There is the option to, uh, to do a new program that we have redesigned the liminality program and it is now a shaman on call program. So basically you get access to Kathy and me in a, uh, we're, we're doing Marco Polo check-ins. So if you've never done a, a Marco Polo, it's like a, it's a video chat, but it's like text. So like one person sends a video and it waits in the other person's inbox until the other person picks it up and then they send a video back and the same thing happens. And so, um, and if you are both live at the same time, you end up doing like a walkie talkie video back and forth. So 
uh, but that makes it super easy. So, you know, if you've got a super busy schedule and you don't have a lot of time to schedule something that's put aside and you don't want to be part of a group chat where you have to wait 30 minutes or 60 minutes or 90 minutes to get your question answered <laughs> because you're on a group call, this is not a group. This is you and us and that's it. And, you know, you send out whenever you have the time and we answer as soon as we have the chance to get back to you. And so it is a very much a shaman on call sort of experience. And so if you are a spiritual entrepreneur who is further along in their journey and, you know, your business is up and running and cranking and you're trying to figure out what to do from here and you've spent a lot of time building your business and now you're realizing that you need to spend some time building you so that your business can grow to the next level, that's the perfect time to get involved with the Liminality program. And you can find that under the services tab on the website at kellysparta.com if you want to know more about it. Um, and, uh, you know, you'll have to just sign up for a discovery call and we'll, we'll talk to you about the details. So, um, yes, that's that. So here we go. So we're going to be doing a lot of these around spiritual entrepreneurship. And, you know, I wanted to start off with shadow work because Shadow work is basically the core of spiritual entrepreneurship. Um, and, and just, we, we've talked about shadow work before, but in case this is your first episode, shadow work is digging into the dark corners and the closets and the, you know, the stuff we stuffed under the bed that we don't want to look at and that we, uh, you know, things we don't like about ourselves, things we don't want to admit about ourselves and, and all of the, the pain and the trauma and things like that, that, that is still impacting our lives, right? It's not about going into the trauma. Don't go back into your trauma. Please, God, don't, don't go back into your trauma. But um, it, it's about digging it out and, and, and getting to a place where you can accept what has been, where you can integrate it into your beingness, where it can truly actually percolate into your beingness, where you can gain the gifts that the challenges have brought you and make use of them because you've, you're not trying to push it away anymore, right? That's effectively what shadow work is. So as we talk about this, the thing you've got to remember from an entrepreneurship perspective is that every piece of shadow work you don't do, yeah, it really stops you from uh, being able to do your business in a higher way. Okay. And, you know, part of that is, um, part of that is around being able to, uh, be fully in your power, right? So if you want to be magnetic and pull people in to your purview, right? Um, you, you need to be standing in your belief structure of, of who you're putting yourself out into the world to believe. So you can't be pretending to be somebody else, right? You can't be going, oh, look at me. I'm so spiritual. Namaste. Right? Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> right? you can't do namaste that. six feet away that was one of the right? best things that came out of covid that's the only good thing that came out was that because i laughed my ass off i'm just saying that was the best thing namaste six feet away that, that, that was it especially when you had a sloth doing it i don't know why it's always way cuter with a sloth doing it but you know that's me all right so 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 let's yeah. pretend let's pretend yeah. i'm opening a reiki shop we're going to pretend okay. this. All right. Okay. And I'm like, oh, well, yes, I practice Reiki, but mm, okay. Mm, I have limiting beliefs if I can really do this and if I'm really going to be good and what if I get something wrong and oh, what if they don't like me and I don't know if I'm going to hit everything nail on the head. So those kind of things that can limit me actually because i'm gonna start, start that's all <laughs> folks it. <laughs> Lord, it's one of them day guys it just is I know. um telling. so i would start self-sabotaging that was the word um self-sabotaging myself yeah is, is that that kind of where what i would do to yeah. myself yeah that those beliefs would generally result in analysis paralysis or not good enough, can't do it, never get started, right? So both of them are never get started, 
But okay. yeah, it's, it's just a matter of which direction you go in and how much you're lying to yourself, right? Because you know, <laughs> I love it. Analysis paralysis, you're lying to yourself pretty hard, That's, right? It's like, yeah, need more yeah. you've met me, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you just got to do it, right? All and, right, and yes. So, and so let's let's do that, right? Because you know I know that those are some of your issues, right? And so you know let's let's work through it. You can be my my uh, my. Coach I'll be a guinea today. pig. That's be it. A guinea pig. So, all right. So you've got the. Let's let's start with the first one. What okay. Was the first one. The first first one was. I have no idea what I said. Um, I so. It uh, was, oh, if, if I get it wrong, let's say I'm doing Reiki. Yeah. Okay. So I want you to think back to the last psychic reading that you had. That I had for me or that for I you, gave you. Reiki on? Okay, for, for me. Okay. Okay. Tell me everything the psychic reader said wrong. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> it was Savannah. She's badass. Nothing. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to promise you there's something she got wrong. Okay. I, there, every reader gets something wrong. Everybody because you misinterpreted or you you didn't see it clearly or you didn't understand the context or whatever, right? But the things that people remember are the things you got right. Ah. Oh, that's, that's actually the object of that that exercise. I got you. actually she did because she it was another female that had crossed over and she was thinking it was my mom and I'm like, mm -hmm. "No, mom's still alive." And so turned out it was a friend of mine had, that had died in a car crash. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, okay. I got gotcha. you. To find it, right? But I, yeah, I did because I didn't remember that because what That's she right. did get right was like so ridiculously awesome. Right. Exactly. And this is what I'm saying. Is there that, you go. They get absolutely everything wrong. You do not remember what they get wrong. You only remember what they got right because we have confirmation bias, right? We're like, we, you, if you're willing to pay for a psychic reading, it's because you believe in psychic readings, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a confirmation bias that says, I want to believe that this is true. And therefore, I'm going to believe it unless there's like huge amounts of, of evidence that it's not, right? So right. That's, the, that's the thing about confirmation bias. Okay. So that's number okay. one. What was the second one? Okay. Um, let's see. They just, uh, they just won't like me in general. Well, I think that's yeah. what I said. Yeah. Some people are not going to like you. That's just the nature of life. And that's I mean, okay. Yeah. and Not just my not job for you. you to like me. If you can't that's see this right. wonderfulness, <laughs> that's your own problem. That's right. <laughs> sad for you. So sad. Sorry. Too bad. Got to go. <laughs> got to go. Yeah. I got to go find my people. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. it. And honey, and that's not to say that's wrong. That's your journey. I'm over here in my wonderfulness. Right. And it, it may not, we may just not cross paths in this lifetime. And I have had people, you know, I've had people who really did not like me early, you know, like years ago, I would have, I, I, I created very strong reactions years ago because, you know, I'm, I have the tact of a elephant, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> Warning, do not then. drink water while <laughs> Kelly's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, so I have the type of an elephant, right? So um, there you go. <laughs> you know, but I would have people who would be have really strong reactions to me when I was early on, right? And I've softened a lot over the years and I've I've developed tact and whatever. But um what I, I I've actually had people come back to me after the fact and say, you know, I didn't like the way you delivered it, but you were absolutely right. Or, you know, I, I couldn't be around you because it was too, in, you were too intense. And again, I've softened a lot over the years, so I don't get these responses anymore, but I got them at the time. Right. Uh -huh. But, but they would come back later and acknowledge that, you know, it was still valid. Right. <clears throat> so, and, and it, does, it doesn't always happen. I mean, people disappear for any number of reasons. People don't work with you for any number of reasons. And, you know, some people aren't just, they just aren't for you. You don't like other, you don't like everybody either. Let's be honest. Yeah, not so or, much. <laughs> you know, usually the people who don't like you are the ones you don't like. True that. True that. But, you know, it's funny because earlier in my life, I spent so much time 
trying to please everyone. Yes. You know, because that is the proper Southern thing to do. Yes. I you know, know, growing up Southern. That and, not you know, anyone. Don't oh, I cannot bother anyone. No. Be a bother. You yes. know, and, but it is, it is exhausting. It and is. especially I remember in high school, I was so stressed out. And it wasn't just me, it was like our whole class, right? So we would basically we had like, you know, the honor classes and all that. And we would go like from classroom to classroom to classroom. So we're, you know, studying like crazy, you know, total nerds and everything. But yay, you know, awesome. But we actually I remember going to the counselor. She actually had like a stress time that we could go and just decompress because we were all had similar issues of we're trying to make this teacher happy, this coach happy, this dance instructor happy, parents happy. You know, get along with the friends, the whole nine yards, and we were freaking stressed the hell out. Yeah. And well, it's funny and you because had hormones on top of it, which does and hormone on top of it, yeah. And then yeah. throughout their life, it's just it changes. I've noticed just situationally from a high school, then now to college. You yeah. know, now to starting out your career. Now, yeah. oh, you met someone. Oh, you're engaged. When you're getting married. When you get married. When you get married. Oh, you're married. When you having a baby. When you having a baby. When you having a baby. Oh, you have. When you having another one. When you having another one. When you have. It never ends. Right. All of these expectations that none of us signed up for. Right. You know. Yeah. So so well, much stress. Yes, so much stress, and it it impacts the business, right? Because you're like, well, everybody's got to like me. And what if people don't like, what if they leave a bad review? Oh, my God. Yes, the reviews. Because everyone lives and dies by flipping reviews and thumbs up and thumbs down. By the way, if you had to take a second, go ahead and like and subscribe to the YouTube right now. So <laughs> go ahead and get that in there. So, Thank you. <laughs> and if you're listening to the podcast, give us five, five, five stars. <laughs> but more importantly, share with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> slices and dices of julian's fries <laughs> fries yes yeah so yeah so um yeah i mean a lot of it i mean people worry about their reviews and and you have to be conscious of your reviews but mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that you know by the time you're ready to start charging for your services you're pretty good because you're harder on yourself than everybody else mm-hmm and so, you know, short of you totally <clears throat> pissing somebody off, you know, you'll get good reviews, right? And and you may get a, a pissed off review. I mean, there's there's one woman on my on my uh, on my uh, Google business right now. She reviewed mm -hmm. my business because she didn't like a three hour mini class I did as a gift for a friend, <laughs> you know, as a favor for a friend on mediumship. And, uh, that, and it was the first thing we did coming out of COVID. And I was, I was rusty cause I hadn't done any mediumship in like two years because of COVID and everything else. And, 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 you know, I wasn't at my best, absolutely, but I gave decent readings and I gave an hour long class and I gave a, a sound healing on top of it. It was just, it was an insane amount of stuff for her 20 bucks. And, and we gave her her money back cause she complained she didn't like it. And I was like, and then she goes and gives me a one-star review and, and insists that, that uh, and I didn't know who she was when she first did the review because I didn't have the list. I wasn't the one who took the registrations. I wasn't the one who took the money. It wasn't through my business. I was just showing up and doing something for three hours as a, as a favor to a friend. And so, you know, and, and yeah, and she gave a bad review. She gave a one-star review and Google wouldn't take it down even though it wasn't for my business it wasn't you know never came through my business none of the money came through my business none of the work was part of my business they don't care they left it up shit happens it doesn't matter shit happens they have enough of other five star reviews that nobody cares mm -hmm. right nobody cares exactly and that's yeah. it at the end of the day is it gonna change your world mm. you know my feeling is if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing you're make you know you're giving it all your effort you know right. you go in with a good heart and all that yeah you're Absolutely. gonna have some bad you can't please everybody get right. over it which is you why know? we gave her her money back you know it's mm -hmm. like yep i i didn't touch into your father who you wanted to talk to and i i can't control whether or not he shows up i told him that in the in the mediumship 
portion of the explanation. I'm like, I don't control who shows up. They're sovereign beings. If they show up, they show up. If they don't, they don't. I can't help that, you know. Right. Um, any media. Oh, she had unrealistic expectations. She did. Yeah. But you know, I mean, that happens. We ha everybody has trolls. Everyone yeah. has trolls. Everybody right? does. You're the beast. And so, you know, this is the thing is that you're always going to end up with a bad review somewhere along the line. The good news is on some of the platforms, your haters are actually going to drive your engagement. <laughs> so like I'm on TikTok. I love TikTok, right? Okay. And if yeah. If I get a hater who is, who is making comments and, you know, going back and forth and with me, it, yeah. it drives my engagement. It, it says, oh, people like this video. We're going to deliver it to more people. And seriously? So we, seriously? Oh, that's funny. Which is awesome, right? So that's I, funny. I it has the opposite on effect. TikTok because it drives my engagement. I'm like, oh, are you, what do you think about this? And they go, oh, I think you suck. I'm like, oh, really? Why is that? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Tell me all the reasons why I suck because you're just driving my engagement. <laughs> One sentence per comment. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that is hilarious. So it has the opposite effect. Oh my God, karma's yeah. a bitch. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is the thing. So you just have yeah. to understand the platform that you're working on and whatever. But you can't worry about the haters. You really can't. Um, but for a lot of us, it feels like rejection, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, oh, I wasn't good enough, and that's that not good enough thing, right? It's not, oh, I was having an off day, or oh, I was out of practice, or oh you know, the person didn't show up or, you know, whatever it was, it's, I'm not good enough. It, it suddenly becomes this all encompassing thing about your ability to do your job at all. Right. And, mm -hmm. and that's unrealistic, but we do that to ourselves, especially in the beginning. Yeah. You know, I'm either perfect or I'm shit. Right. And that's the problem. So, you know, a lot of this is about giving yourself permission to be human and giving yourself permission to have off days and giving yourself permission to, you know, be be normal right <laughs> it's like yeah. nobody has an on day every day no one no nah. you know i mean i get migraines periodically you ask me to do any sort of psychic reading on a migraine day you're out of luck there is no psychic ability on a migraine day it doesn't exist right mm -mm. i have an off day mm -mm. now i'm kick ass any other time but not on a migraine day Sometimes yeah. on the day after a migraine, if it was bad enough, I have migraine brain and it's just like, it's all like cotton in my head. It's just like, bleh, right? <laughs> so not going to happen those days. Yeah. Either. But you know, wait a couple of days and I'll knock your socks off. But I don't suddenly yeah. decide that I suck because I had a migraine, right? <laughs> like, well, and, and for me too, like I, before, like I went through, you know, the, the inner peace 101 before yeah. that, you know, so that was me personally going through, my, you know, my shadow work and all, and that would affect my business. So before that, I would have taken everything so flippant personally and because I never dealt with the issues, you know, right. why did I feel this way? You know, yeah. why did I ever want to be seen? What below me? What, you know, or, you know, why did I always strive to make friends? in whatever situation and make all these one-sided contracts, you know, transactional love going, Oh, well I'll do A, B, C, D and E for you. Um, just like me, you know, right. cause I never felt good enough, you know? And yeah. I'm like, screw that now, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> different attitude now, yeah, I'm not doing a little bit different. You. You're on your own. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, the other thing is, um, uh, some friends of ours have, uh, were afraid to be too successful. Because yeah. now they're going to be seen. Yes. And that's a whole nother level. And I remember you, uh, I think it was on the last podcast or the other one. You're like, how do you feel about being seen? I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, God. bitch, I'm out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but uh, there, was a, um, there was a friend of ours that, that uh, they were going to be on TV spontaneously. And they were severely like petrified of that. And I'm like, yeah. dude, it's going to bolster your business. Rock out. Right. You know, and they were like, well, yeah, but mm, not so much. <laughs> you know, but, don't think about who's on the other end of the camera. Just talk to the camera. That's yeah. The just talk to, to the camera. Yeah. Just talk to the person that's talking to you. You'll be fine. Right. But don't think about how many people are going to see it or you'll freeze up. That's, that's the answer to that one. Right. Yeah. 
So, you know, here's the thing, right? You're talking classic new practitioner stuff here, right? It's, it's always, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not going to be good enough. I'm afraid I'm going to be wrong. I'm afraid. Just give yourself permission <coughs> to not be good enough. Give yourself permission to be wrong. And, you know, because that was the day I, you know, I've told this story before. The day that I proved to myself that I was psychic was when I was asked to do a bunch of readings for people I'd never met. And I didn't have any cards. I didn't have anything. And I was like, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. And they're like, yeah, you know, the guy was like, yeah, you do. You do it all the time at the church. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, no, 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 no. I just, I write other people's readings. I don't, I don't do it myself. You know, because <laughs> like, I'd always get extra information while they were doing, you know, um, mediumship from the pulpit. And I would give it to whoever in, at the coffee clutch after, after the service and say, oh, I got, for what it's worth, I got this, right? Right. And he watched me do this week after week after week after week. And I told him things about himself. And, but uh, no, 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 I don't do this. I don't do this. Right. And then he cornered me and said, why don't you do readings for these eight or 10 people that are in the room that you never met before? And I was like, yeah! I was like, freaking That's out! That's a way to kick you out the nest. I was like, fine, <laughs> I will do this with the understanding that absolutely everything that comes out of my mouth is probably wrong. And they went, yeah, okay. And that gave me permission. Right? Gave me permission. You were good to go after that. Okay, you know, here we go. Well, and off I went. And, you know, I don't usually remember readings anymore. I usually don't remember what I tell people I'm, I'm channeling. And, you know, I'm not trying to remember because it's not my business, right? I remember every freaking reading I did that day because it flipped me out so bad that I was handing people information I had no right to know. Like, I knew that this one couple was going camping and then they were going to a marriage counselor, marriage retreat. I, I like, I, I mean, detailed stuff, right? And every single thing I got quote unquote wrong, there was one person in the room who was terrified to have a reading, but desperate to have a reading. And she, she was like, she wanted both. And she was so scared. All I could get was terror when I went to look at her. And everything I quote unquote got wrong on anybody else, she would go, that's mine. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> That's mine. No, she didn't. Yeah. And so I, I was like reading the couple that was having problems. And I said, I said, you've got, and I'm like, why do I keep going back and forth between boys seven and nine and twins 19? And, and they were like, yeah, we have the boys seven and nine. And she's like, twins are mine. <laughs> and I'm like, you're going to Niagara? And they're like, no. She's like, that's me. <laughs> okay. She was just shoving her energy. Into she was going in between. Meeting. To, to like, and so everything I got wrong was hers. <laughs> so I wasn't getting it wrong. I was just getting hers. Right. And so, you know, I said, it's just weird stuff. Like, you know, I'm looking at this guy who's dressed like a corporate exec and I'm looking at him and going, you paint. He said, yeah. I said, for a living. He's like, yeah, I'm a house painter. And I'm like, to look at this guy, he looked like a corporate executive. I was like staring at his shoes, looking for paint flecks. I'm like, what did I see that I didn't know? I'm looking at his nails. Yeah. Are they covered in paint? No, nothing. Immaculate. But I, I just knew. And I was just, and I was like, you're another one. I'm like, you're a sole caretaker for someone who's an invalid. And she's like, yeah. I'm mean, like, it's a family member. She's like, yeah. I said, you're done. She said, yeah. I said, and nobody is saying they'll take over. She said, yeah. I said, there's somebody who will take over, but they're not going to tell you until you quit. You have to absolutely quit and walk away before they will do it because they really don't want to. She was like, good to know, right? Good to know. <laughs> but I'm like, I just, I remember every single read I did because it freaked me out. There was even Well, a guy I guess who, so. <laughs> yeah. There was even a guy who, who, um, who was, he had been to famous readers, famous readers. And he said, they never get anything off of me. He said, don't, don't judge your ability based on me because they never get anything off of me. And I went, huh, that's interesting. I wonder why. And I went back in time to when he was five years old and I saw him put up the shield that keeps him from being able to see anything. And I told him how he put it up and how he could take it down. And he was just like, oh my God, nobody's ever been able to give me anything like that. Okay. Because I gave myself permission to totally screw up, right? I it, gave myself it took permission the pressure to off. Wrong, 
And so everything I saw came out of my mouth instead of me going, well, is this right? Or is that right? Or, oh, if nobody, nobody who's a famous reader has ever been able to give him anything, I couldn't possibly do that. I was, I had full permission to be totally wrong. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, here, <laughs> like, here's everything that's coming through. Right. And, oh my and gosh. I, was I terrified myself. I was like, how do I know this stuff? I don't know how I know this stuff. I shouldn't know this stuff. Right. <laughs> But, but it was true. Okay. So this is the sort of thing, right? And this was the reason that it's so anchored in my memory is because I leaned on it so hard in the years to come to prove to myself that I knew what I was doing. So if you do nothing else, put yourself in a position where you have to do readings for total strangers and give yourself absolute permission to totally screw it up and then watch yourself be amazing and hold on to that memory because that will keep you solid in your belief in your abilities. Because the very first stage of doing this work, before you have to convince anybody else that you know what you're doing, you have to convince yourself. Absolutely. You're gonna edit. You're going to edit what you say. You're going to hem and haw. You're going to soften it. You're going to twist it. You're going to, you know, I can't possibly say this, you know, but you need to say it, right? That sort of thing. Okay. Well, there you go. So what what is your parting Kellyism? Mm. That pretty much was it, but Yeah. Um, give yourself permission to fuck it up. Fuck it up hard. There you go. If you're gonna fuck it up, fuck it up hard. It so... up hard. Yeah. <laughs> go big, go home. Yeah. Well, and you know, if you're thinking about doing shadow work right now, you know, we, we have a quiz on the website. It's the, mm -hmm. our, you know, what is your shadow work readiness score, right? And it's at the top of every single page on kellysparta.com. It's a free quiz. All you got to do is just fill it out. And it, it, people are saying how remarkable it is that it's describing them. So, um, And you, you put know, it on Instagram too. Didn't I see it on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. It's going One out on Instagram. It's going out on okay. Facebook. It's the um, only place it's not being done regularly is TikTok right now. But, um, yeah, it's going out a lot of places because it is so useful. So, you know, if you're thinking that shadow, shadow work might be your path, take the quiz. It'll tell you exactly where you are and exactly what your next step is. There you go. All right. Um, and we are going to include Heather's email, um, in the show notes for anyone who would like, um, to talk about the liminality program. To talk about yeah. the liminality program and all. We're going to include that. Or, oh, all right. No, um, uh, that too, but also for anybody who wants to come on the show. To come on the show and and, and have, have a coaching session like we just Have said. a coaching. Yeah. Be illuminated. Be illuminated. <laughs> Be walked through liminal space. We should yes. probably mention what liminal is. <laughs> That'd be a thing. <laughs> So, you know, liminality is, is this, so it's based on this idea of liminal space and liminal space is the space between the energetic realm and the physical reality. It is the place where manifestation occurs. It's the place where you pull the energetic into the physical, you go through liminal space, you go through liminality, right? And so that is what the, the, the core the program name is based on. So, Very interesting. Go. I like that. <laughs> I do. I do. I learned something today. I love it. All right. Well, that's all the time that we have for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. <laughs> so long, everybody. <laughs> Bye.